Well, today was Conference USA Media Day, a day of firsts for both UTEP head coach Scotty Walden and NMSU's head coach Tony Sanchez. Frisco, Texas was the host of CUSA Media Day and Coach Walden, his first time taking part in the event as he was joined by wide receiver Trey Goodman and defensive end Maurice Westmoreland. Now Walden gearing up for his first season as head coach of the Miners. Now, of course, not much is expected from UTEP this season, but Coach Walden says that's okay. They're not listening to the outside noise, but it does begin with winning over the fans here in the borderland. We can have an, env an environment unlike any environment in college football at our place. We have such a unique opportunity, but we have to put a product on the field and in the community that El Pasoans want to come and see. And that, that also goes for our sister city, Ciudad Juarez, which is, you know, home to, you know, another 1.5 million people. And you, you combine that, you're talking over 2.5 million people in our region that we have an opportunity to impact through the game of football, which is beautiful. Well, the day continued over on ESPN Plus, the Conference USA kickoff show, as Goodman, who followed Coach Walden from Austin P, gave some insight into the expectations on the offensive side of the ball. So I feel like our biggest strength for us, I feel like it would be our tempo. Um, and our accomplishments, like I said, is another one is just growth. Continue to try and um, uh, beat ourselves, basically. So if we, ha we set goals each week. If we set a goal one week, we beat it. Let's try and do it again next week. Why not? up it more. UTEP opens their season on the road at Nebraska on August 31st. Meantime, the NMSU Aggies are preparing for their second season as members of Conference USA, and they'll be led by a new head coach as well, Tony Sanchez. Coach Sanchez was joined by offensive lineman Shia Speet and defensive end Buda Paletti. Now, Coach Sanchez, not a stranger to the program. He was the team's wide receivers coach, so the transition hasn't changed much, but there are some holes to fill. NMSU lost 17 starters from a season ago, and of course, that was the season that saw them play in the Conference USA championship game against Liberty. Now only two starters are back on the defensive side, but for the Aggies, that's not that's no excuse for the goals that they have this season. Really excited about it. I, you know, we've uh, we've done a really good job of changing the culture over the last two years. I'm um, excited to dig back in and continue it, uh, continue to keep it going in a positive direction and fight for that third bowl game in a row. Never done that before in school history, and uh, I think we're we're lined up to do so. Uh, I feel like you know us having two people returning, it don't really mean much for us. And I mean, at the end of the day. Whoever stays and whoever's here, they're Aggies. You know what I mean? We have a culture here, and we're building around it. And um, since the spring, I, I think that we've had a train going, and it doesn't stop for anybody. NMSU kicks off their season August 31st at home against Southeast Missouri State. Well, there's your look at sports. We'll send things over to Doppler. All right. Uh, we're looking at a pretty nice night tonight. So if you're just going to be uh, relaxing out there at your